Let's kind of take a look under the cover of Raman spectrometer now, of a Raman spectroscopy now, and come to understand a little bit about the theoretical basis of what causes a molecule to scatter Raman light. If you're in a hurry or something, this video would be one that I might think about looking at later because it's going to be a little more theoretical. There's going to be a little mathematical backbone to this one because we have to think this through. The classic molecule for explaining this is benzene. Okay? Benzene, nice symmetric molecule. Now, the benzene molecule can undergo what's called ring breathing, where the carbon-carbon bonds all stretch at once. And the molecule just breathes, okay? So the carbons all stretch at the same time. If we think back to infrared, let's put this in red. If we look at IR, the fundamental rule of IR is that there must be a change in the dipole moment. A change in the dipole moment. Now, in the ring breathing, this molecule has no dipole moment. And when it breathes, when the molecule stretches all six of those carbon-carbon bonds at once, it doesn't cause it to have a dipole moment. <clears throat> Mathematically, the way this is stated is that the intensity is proportional to the ground state wave function, or the excited state wave function, mu psi d tau. That's the mathematical equation for it, where these are the wave functions for the ground state and excited state, and mu is the dipole moment. If the dipole moment is change is zero, this term is zero, the whole thing is zero, and you don't see any infrared spectroscopy. You don't see an infrared spectrum. In Raman, you're not looking at a dipole moment. You're looking at something called the polarizability. What is the polarizability? Quite frankly, it's simple. It's the ability to polarize. It's the ability of the incident electric field to generate a dipole in the molecule. Imagine the benzene ring when it stretches. So we've got all of these bonds all at once. So that molecule stretches and becomes, you know, a bigger benzene molecule. Okay, that's all it's really done. All I've done is stretch it. Okay, the electron cloud that's associated with the benzene molecule has moved out. That is a polarizability change, a change in the polarizability ellipsoid. And the way that's written is to say that mu induced, the induced dipole is equal to alpha which is a tensor times E, the electric field. So here you have the induced dipole, which has to change because this feeds into the same equation. So now you have psi star mu induced psi for Raman. If the mu induced changes, you see a Raman scatter. And that induced dipole is caused by this alpha E. What is alpha? Alpha is, it's a big matrix, or it's represented mathematically as a matrix. And I'll just draw a few terms. I won't spend the time to do it all. Alpha XX, Alpha X, Alpha X, XX, YY, ZZ. And then here you have XY, XZ, Alpha XZ, sorry, Alpha XZ, Alpha Y, X, alpha, Y, Z, etc. You have all these terms in there, and then the electric field has terms in each of these dimensions, X, Y, and Z, and that's the vector for it. And when these interact, that's when you get an induced dipole. What does all of this mean? It means that this molecule, by breathing, has now changed its electron cloud, it's changed its polarizability. 
And that change in polarizability has induced a dipole that's allowed the molecule to now express a Raman scatter signal. The ring breathing frequency of this, which is right around 997 wave numbers, is an enormous Raman peak. It's huge. And it was the proof positive to the Kekulé structure of benzene to see that it doesn't show up in the infrared, but it does in the Raman. So the key point here is that you're not dealing with dipoles. You're dealing with induced dipoles caused by this polarizability change. CO2 is another great example. The CO2 molecule, which is a linear molecule, when it undergoes this stretching motion, does not change dipole. You will not see that motion in the infrared, but you will see it in the Raman because this is distorting the electric field. And actually part of my PhD thesis was looking at the argon atom. The argon atom obviously does not have a dipole, but because of collisions with neighboring argon atoms, the electron field could be distorted and you actually saw Raman spectrum several hundred wave numbers either side of the Rayleigh peak caused by this collision-induced scattering of the argon. So that's the basic background looking kind of, as I said, under the hood of what makes a Raman peak happen. The ability to induce a dipole caused by this polarizability.